Welcome to this presentation on the Goodweave International Generic Standard. In this presentation, we will walk you through an overview of the key changes reflected in the new Goodweave International Generic Standard, also known as the Goodweave Standard, along with the resources and support that Goodweave is providing to producers as they implement it. Goodweave began developing the new standard in 2016 as it expanded product certification beyond carpets to include home textiles, apparel, and fashion jewelry. The new standard is a revised version of the rug standard and it has not changed substantially. The three certification principles remain the same and the progress principles are very similar. Overall, with the exception of a few new criteria, the main difference is that the new standard contains strengthened and enhanced requirements, particularly around Principle 2, which enforces no forced or bonded labor. As of May 2020, all Goodweave affiliated exporters, carpets, home textiles, fashion jewelry, and apparel are being assessed for compliance with the new Goodweave standard. The new standard is comprised of two components. Component 1 of the standard establishes the principles and requirements that are universal to all Goodweave product categories. Component 2 of the standard is the Scope, Claims, and Labeling SCL document that sets out the requirements for certifying specific product categories. There is currently an SCL for carpets and one for home textiles. For compliance purposes, the Goodweave standard is the official document against which suppliers are audited. A separate guidance document has also been developed to support users of the Goodweave standard. This document supplements the Goodweave standard and should be used in conjunction with it. The guidance document provides a summary of the standard certification requirements and highlights the intent behind the requirements and provides practical understanding of how exporters and subcontractors can comply. Both components of the standard as well as the guidance document are available for download from Goodweave's website. In the new standard, the certification requirement criteria are now clearly specified for different supply chain actors. The new standard is now quite clear on the expectations for employers of home-based workers as well as the home-based workers themselves. The responsibility for compliance with the standard lies with Goodweave licensed exporters and their subcontractors. Producers at all levels in the supply chain must be aware of and comply with the standard. Where home-based work is carried out, the contractor who assigned work to the home-based worker is considered the employer and is responsible for ensuring compliance with the requirements of the standard. The Goodweave license holder is also responsible for continuously monitoring compliance with the standard at all levels of their supply chain. The new standard entered into force on May 1, 2019, and starting May 1, 2020, all sectors are now assessed for compliance with this new standard. Existing licensees have up to 12 months to demonstrate full compliance with any new requirements from their first audit after May 1, 2020. To ensure that producers are ready to fully comply with the new Goodweave standard, Goodweave is offering a number of resources, including this video, for producers and workers. These include a webinar for licensed exporters that walks through the changes, timelines for implementation, and supporting materials answers to frequently asked questions, a reference document outlining the key changes to the certification requirements, a comprehensive guidance document to support compliance with the standard, and templates for record keeping and sample documents for production units. Examples of these templates and sample documents include a sample child labor policy and remediation plan, a sample daily time recording system for home-based work units to keep track of young workers' time, a template to evaluate hazardous tasks on work sites, and an employment agreement template. All of these resources can be found on the Goodweave website. Now let's transition to a discussion on the certification requirements. Principle A1 ensures that the producer does not engage in or support the use of child labor. It also covers the restrictions on young workers. There have been no substantive changes in Principle A1 in the new standard. As a reminder, the five criteria that fall under Principle A1 support this requirement around no child labor by requiring the producer to provide public notices that they do not allow child labor, verifying the age of workers to ensure children are not employed, having processes in place for remediation if child labor was to be found, 
clearly prohibiting hazardous work for young workers, keeping records of young workers and the work they perform, and ensuring that school-age children are not working during school hours. While there have been no substantive changes to Principle A1 in the new standard, there have been some updates to the requirements that fall under A1. There are some things which Goodweave has always verified for during inspections that are now explicitly stated in the requirements, such as the requirement for a written policy on child labor. There are also some requirements which have been strengthened through the new standard. For example, the standard now requires the notices that child labor is not allowed be in a language understood by all workers, and it requires a written commitment from home-based workers that they will not engage children in production. Home-based workers must now demonstrate that children and young workers who are subject to school still aren't working during school hours. Hazardous work has always been explicitly prohibited for young workers under the standard. What is new within the new standard is the addition of specific criteria that strengthen this requirement. There is now an explicit requirement for a risk assessment, a requirement that producers must post permissible working hours and must ensure young workers understand their rights, and that young workers are allowed to refuse hazardous work. Principle A2 ensures that there is no forced or bonded labor used in production units. Principle A2 has six requirements that fall under it, which all work together to ensure that workers are not forced or compelled to work by the employer, which includes through policies, physical or psychological measures, and that appropriate systems are in place to prevent it as well, such as time recording systems and payment trackers. It is important to note that this principle, in and of itself, is not new. What is new are some of the strengthened ways and clarity around it to ensure this principle is being met, which will be covered in the next slide. Forced labor is complicated, and we want to emphasize here that not all non-compliances under Principle A2 constitute forced labor. While in some cases non-compliances may signify indicators or risks of forced labor and are important to address to mitigate the risk, other serious non-compliances may constitute a forced and bonded labor case. Let's look now at the changes. Under A2, clarity has been added around home-based work to explain that they are not bound to one employer. It is now a core requirement to ensure that workers do not endure harsh, inhumane, or inappropriate treatment. As a part of this, the standard now requires that a grievance mechanism is available for anonymous complaints. The Goodweave guidance document on the standard provides more specific guidance on what constitutes an acceptable and effective grievance mechanism. It is also now a core requirement that producers cannot restrict the movement of workers during or outside of work. This includes allowing workers to move around the workplace to take breaks, use the bathroom, and eat meals. Workers must be able to have unobstructed access to exits in all facilities. For example, factory doors may not be locked, preventing workers from leaving the facility. Employers must allow workers to leave the premises at any time after a standard workday. Workers cannot be retaliated against or penalized for refusing to work overtime hours. Also, workers are not required to live at the worksite, but if they do, they are free to leave the premises as they choose. The previous standard allowed for written or verbal employment agreements, but now the standard requires the contract to be written in a language that the worker understands. The standard now also spells out certain components that must be included in the agreement, such as job description, working hours, and pay or piece rate and signatures. Employers are responsible for ensuring that workers understand the terms and conditions of work, including the format and language. For payments, A2 now states that payments are to be made in a form which is acceptable to workers, and that workers should understand how wages are calculated through their pay slips as well as any deductions that were made and how these were calculated. The new standard has strengthened requirements around use of loans. While the provision of loans or advances by employers is not prohibited by the standard, using advances or loans to bond workers or their family members is not allowed. Any interest charged on loans must be reasonable so that a worker is able to pay a loan and they are not bound to the employer by debt. Wages cannot be withheld as a penalty or to force workers to work as a payment against a debt to the employer. Also, payment methods must be made on terms that a worker agrees to and understands. The responsible use of labor brokers is a new requirement under A2. 
The standard now clarifies that workers must receive wages directly from the employer, contracts must be held between the employer and the worker, costs associated with recruitment must be borne by the employer, and the labor broker, if engaged, does not collect fees or take payment from the worker as a condition for their recruitment. Whenever possible, employers should directly recruit their workers. If they must use labor brokers, they must adhere to the criteria outlined in the standard. The intention of Principle A3 is to ensure that conditions of work are documented and verifiable. This principle has not really changed in the new standard. Producers must administer business practices that are transparent and adhere to all relevant local and national laws and regulations at all levels of the supply chain. All production sites must be registered, including home-based work sites. At all levels, access must be provided with all relevant documentation and personnel, and inspectors allowed access for unannounced inspections. The only change under A3 is the requirement which prohibits employers from retaliating against workers for providing information to Goodweave about working conditions. For example, a worker cannot be laid off or financially penalized for speaking with Goodweave during or after an audit or inspection. The Goodweave standard continues to emphasize that all production sites must be registered with Goodweave and the production units must ensure that this is happening. The new standard continues to include progress principles, which enable Goodweave to promote non-discrimination, freedom of association and collective bargaining, and decent working conditions at work, such as health and safety, and legally compliant working hours, wages, and benefits. However, as with the Goodweave rug standard, criteria in these sections are designed to encourage continuous improvement over time and licensing and certification is not contingent on compliance with them. Goodweave supports and encourages producers to adopt these principles and continue to make improvements in these areas. These principles are assessed during the initial audits and revisited during each annual audit. There have been no major changes to the progress principles, rather just a few changes in how they are organized in the new standard. The list of the progress principles is shown here. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video on the overview of the changes reflected in the new Goodweave standard. If you have any questions at all, please do not hesitate to reach out to Goodweave via the website linked here or through an email to standards at goodweave.org.